Hey everybody, do right back at it again with another video. Today we are going to be talking about Police 1013. Why you might ask? I mean, what the hell do you have to do with all this do-rag? That's probably what you're thinking, huh? I'm fucking ground zero! Come here! Pop a squat next to Uncle Do-rag because it's story time. Now, some of you may be wondering, how did this whole debacle start? The debacle between Sid Alpha, Big Fry, Police 1013, all of that. Well, to answer that, we have to go back to a video that I had made a while ago. It was a video where I interviewed a developer from the game SRT, or Special Response Team, a story-driven SWAT game. And oh boy did I not know what I was getting myself into. Because at the time, I was just looking for another SWAT game to add to my collection, and SRT just so happened to be on the radar. I was able to get an interview, but I had the choice of going with either Brian Watts, the community manager, or wait a day and go with another guy who was the lead programmer. Well, First of all, I'm Brian Watts. I'm the casting director. I'm the lead writer and I guess the voice actor for Special Response Team. The interview went pretty well, but little did I know, Brian Watts actually had a history. People on Discord sent me some messages saying, hey, be careful with this guy because he would harass some YouTubers. And I was just like, oh, oh, okay, interesting. I still stuck with SRT because he wasn't the head guy. I think that Brian Watts is a little off his rocker, but I mean, as long as he's not the head guy leading the project, then I guess I'll cover it. That was my thought process going forward. But then the very next day, a very long and lengthy comment showed up on my video by a Wingman Games. Wingman Games is a studio that was developing Police 1013 before its initial shutdown. We'll get to that later. The comment itself was basically a personal attack on Brian Watts, ending with, as soon as you actually become a company, we'll sue you for defamation. Whoa! Whoa, 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 what the fuck? Okay, so now I was concerned. I mean, I was this close from stepping away from SRT because of all the stuff that was coming my way. But then I received a message from Brian Watts saying, hey, you should delete this comment. And I was just like, no, I shouldn't. Brian, you don't want to be one of those developers that silences criticism, do you? Because we only just met. You should either ignore it or if it's actual legitimate criticism, learn from it. You don't want to be one of those developers that silences people, right? And he's like, yeah, I guess you're right. Brian Watts almost validated that comment by telling me to delete it. This is the moment when I thought that he was a little off his rocker. But once I explained to him that that was a hugely bad idea, he backed away from it. Because when people are coming at him, he can get irrational. So he has to act professional and think before he speaks because he's a developer now. So after that, he then explained the reason why he wanted me to delete it. Him and Wingman Games have had a history. I didn't know who to trust because it seemed like everything was stacked against Brian. But then Brian showed me a laundry list of Wingman Games just going after other developers like Brian in the same fashion. I read through all the very long screenshots that he sent me and they're all basically very long conversations of Wingman Games going back and forth between other developers. Most of these developers seem to ask the same question, which is, where is Police 1013 gameplay? And then Wingman Games, or Matt Norman, the lead developer, would respond in the same fashion as he did with Brian, making very long statements and subtly hinting at or outright calling for defamation lawsuits. According to the pictures, he has done this to the LSPDFR devs, Palm Beach Games, Visionary Studios, a few here that I'm not too sure about because it looks like it's their personal accounts, but yeah. I was like, what the fuck? I kind of sat on the situation because I just wanted to see something. From what I had heard, Wingman Games was going to show off a developer diary, basically where he shows off the game and then he talks about it. So I watched the dev diary stream and honestly, I was not impressed. If anything, something seemed a bit off about it. I mean, I didn't want to jump to conclusions or anything, at least not until I had something definitive to say about it. But then Brian sent me a link to a Redditor page. It seems like this guy's been following Police 1013 since its initial inception. He quite literally points out everything that he thinks is wrong with the project and I gotta say that there's a lot of valid points in here but I'm gonna just be looking at the very latest one because that was the one that I saw if you want to read the whole thing it's gonna be down in the description for you to look at it dates back to 2014 this is actually great because Matt actually deleted all of the previous dev diaries so this just kind of gives you like a summary of what's what went on with them I think it's kind of shady that Matt decided to delete those but you know it's whatever anyways so because of this reddit post we are actually able to find out all the assets that were used in the dev diary which is the one that I'm showing on screen the 
The first one is the character interaction, which was later compared in another YouTube video. The next one is the destructible road signs pack, the desert town pack, the urban city pack, the QA modular parking pack, the small office prop pack, the modular prison interior pack, the indoor shooting range pack, the procedural landscape ecosystem pack. I think it's funny because the main developer for Police 1013 said that these assets were made in house, which is a blatant lie and something that you'll be seeing throughout the entire time that I talk through this video. Now guys, listen, I want to make this totally clear, okay? I don't mind developers using bot assets. That's totally fine, okay? But from what I saw in the Dev Diary stream, it just looked like the game was slapped together within a few weeks with no development behind it. The person who found all of these bot assets on the marketplace did the math. All of the assets that were featured in the Dev Diary stream costed around $600 altogether. I did my research. I know that this game has been in development since 2013, and this is all they had to show? I want you to keep in mind, okay, that this dev stream took place earlier this year, March, I believe. At this time, their donation page was sitting at 123k in crowdfunding, so they're already not using their funding to their full potential. I just find it very odd that with a big donation pool that they are so heavily reliant on bot assets. Most developers that I have talked to said that they would kill for that kind of money and that they would accomplish more that was shown off in that stream. So even though this game's development has been ongoing since 2014, it looked like it was slapped together within a few weeks. Curious, I was able to get in contact with a lot of former Police 1013 developers. I say a lot because Police 1013 has gone through a lot of devs and modern raiders because of Matt Norman's behavior. The reason I wanted to contact them was to see if any of them had seen any of those crowdfunding donations. Like, is he paying you? And all of them said no. They told me that they were basically doing volunteer work. The head developer even said in private conversations, at the start of every month, UE4 gives packs away for free, so keep an eye on that. So he's even getting free bought assets, which begs the question, where's the rest of the money? So I'm sitting here on a bombshell of a story, but I told Brian I'm probably not the right person to do it because I'm so tiny. As much as I would like to break it, I honestly didn't think that I would make a big impact. So I told him, contact Big Fry. I'm sure he would love a story like this. And that's exactly what he did. There's some really shady shit going on with this development and to be honest with you when i asked matt if anything had been scrapped and he told me no i took him at face value until today when i really pushed in their discord fought off a whole bunch of fanboys asking so many different questions to get clarified about these assets sam cook finally comes out and admits that when he was brought on they essentially started again with a fresh project and i just want to make sure that everybody knows that that is what is actually going on because matt never said anything in his dev blog about any of that basically the entire video is a big fry questioning what was really going on with the development because he was in their discord pulling teeth to find out that they had actually scrapped their previous build and built the one that we saw on stream within a few weeks he was asking what was actually going on within the past five years that this game was being developed supposedly being developed if you want to check out the full video it's in the description it almost has a lot of like foreshadowing for what's to come not only do we get in contact with big fry we also got in contact with sid alpha sid alpha's video really hit the lead developer where it hurt the video on your screen now is from the youtube channel durag it is an interview with brian watts who identifies himself as the casting director lead writer and voice actor for the video game special response team now in the comment section of that video matt norman posted a lengthy comment in which he engages in direct character attacks against Watts, accuses him of poaching a moderator, and threatens to sue Watts for defamation. On the forums at lspdfr.com, it stated in regards to the Police 1013 developers, quote, The lead developers started bashing members when questions regarding the legitimacy of the game were raised and legal action was also threatened against us. In this now-deleted discussion thread that was on the game's Steam Greenlight page, yes, this thing was on Greenlight, the developer likens critics to children while stating they are a group of adults. Then continues on to state, quote, I suggest those that wish to make themselves look out of touch or for whatever reason choose to stand in the way of our company's progress be forewarned that legal action will take place and those responsible will be disclosed to Steam management for permanent banning, amongst other things. And in this Facebook post where Norman threatens a former 
moderator with a defamation lawsuit. Then there's also this now deleted Facebook discussion thread where Matt Norman attempts to pick a fight with Palm Beach Games, accusing them of not having any original assets within his game, while his game currently seems to contain no original assets. In response to this, a third party stated that Norman's latest dev blog contained nothing but purchased assets, and Palm Beach Games responded by stating, We have previously tried to establish a friendly connection with Wingman Games. They have refused and have since responded with hostility. Matt Norman continued on by claiming that nothing within the developer update was purchased and was all made in-house, which as we have already shown is not entirely accurate. Norman then stated they were indeed making use of the Urban Construction Pack and attempted to claim that Brendan was being unprofessional while continuing on with his own highly unprofessional trolling of other developers. And then, once again, accusing the person he was bickering with to be a child, which is something that is extremely prevalent with Matt Norman in his videos that discuss other developers or the quote-unquote trolls. And then I was also sent this lengthy private discussion featuring Matt Norman continuing on with his extreme levels of abuse against other developers. I will skip past the 2015 conversation as it was wholly innocuous to the 2017 conversation which is anything but. Norman is irate over what turns out to be a comment within a YouTube video posted by Visionary Studios for their game responding in a now unlisted pre-alpha trailer. Right away, Norman accuses them of stealing assets from Grand Theft Auto V and then states, I think you may want to rethink your public approach as you're obviously not an actual LLC, are you? This opens you up to defamation suits and serious damages. This seems to be ongoing. If it happens again, I'll have your YouTube channel and Facebook channel taken down for your harassment. Then we'll see you in court. How would you like that? Just continue with the harassment and defamation. Visionary Studios responded by sending a screenshot stating this was the only thing they had posted about Wingman Games. In that screenshot, they state that Wingman Games had previously harassed other development studios and spread lies about them, then said, I've been in contact with almost all police and emergency sim developers, and I've seen you personally harass all. I'm about to rip his mask off. His mask off. So before Big Fry did his video calling out the game, Matt Norman put out a big announcement. For his next dev diary, he was going to answer a bunch of these questions. Crowdfunding, realistic budgets, building a team, purchasing certain assets, plugins, and materials, how the Unreal Engine company helps developers move quicker through development. I would have loved to have heard these first five, but then he continues on saying the scam concept, trolls, conspiracy, and an ongoing push to drive indie developers into the ground, communities and fan bases, keyboard warriors, YouTube influencers, and the rules in hurting the indie gaming industry. I would have really liked to have heard those first five because I really wanted to know where that money went. But after Big Fry and Sid Alpha's video, he didn't go through with that. In fact, he took the time to reflect by releasing a statement saying that what he did was wrong. He then took the time to look for all the comments that were mentioned in the video and then went to those videos and started deleting them. So if you go to my older video, you won't be able to see those comments anymore. In a recent video from Wingman Games, he claims that we photoshopped all of these. Well, I'm here to tell you that we did not. This is all the stuff that's been handed to us by multiple developers. If you want to go confirm, maybe ask LSPDFR, Palm Beach Games, Visionary Studios to confirm. So after this point, everything kind of went silent. From what I understand, Matt made a deal with his other developers that he would stop talking and let someone else be the PR guy, or else they would leave the project because of his bad rap. Everything seemed really quiet, or at least I didn't hear anything, until fairly recently when I had posted a video about how SRT had halted their production. And almost as if it was like a hook, line, and sinker, Matt could not help it. He was in my comment section doing another personal attack on Brian Watts. This was a comment that had a gigantic thread of around 40 comments where Matt Norman and Big Fry are going at it. Big Fry is just basically like, go finish your fucking game. And I think that this was the most childish thing that I had actually seen from Matt Norman with him coming out with the name calling. He was calling Big Fry, Fat Fry. Like, wow, Matt, real mature. This is the lead developer for Police 1013? I really wish that I had actually clipped the entire thing because it was basically half of my comment section. My comments were sitting at like 80 comments, but as soon as Matt deleted it, it went back down to like 40. <laughs> It was like a really long back and forth that I wish I had clipped. About a day after, Big Fry dropped a video saying that because Matt broke his promise, all of his developers basically jumped ship. There were even reports of some developers actually breaking NDA. Yikes! I have never known developers to actually break NDAs unless it was like really bad. In the video, 
Voxfire, who was basically held in high regard by Matt Norman, basically put up a resignation letter in the chat that was deleted and that person was banned. So Matt Norman was once again losing developers. This is not a concept that he's not used to. As a last ditch effort, Matt looked to his community for investors. My big thing is the way we're going, if we if we got done where we're going, we won't we won't make enough money to fulfill me getting all these developers in. I mean, that's the biggest problem. Um, you know, developers want to be paid. No, um, at the moment, they were on a share of the company. That's obviously um, going to cease um, if they've left. Uh, um, that'll cease. Um, other new development uh, and the new way forward and the new pathway that we've forged with this negotiation of um, where 1013 is going. So, Matt, here's with this what publisher. Here's what I'm gonna do for you and the community in here. If you can show me gameplay, I'm not saying win, just saying, whenever you guys feel comfortable to show proper gameplay of the game, you know, show everything. Yeah. Why not hit me up? I don't care, I donate a couple million. Hit me up. Maybe that's what we'll have. I'm I'm guessing that that didn't go so well because every YouTube video has been hidden or deleted from Wingman Games. Police 1013 no longer has the Steam Greenlight page. It was deleted by author. The Police 1013 website was undergoing maintenance. Project Blue Line is closed because Matt is negotiating with investors and because the fundraising goal was unsuccessful despite the initial goal being 100k, which was achieved. Critics of Matt Norman were saying, what the hell is happening? Is this the start of Matt jumping ship? Because negotiations with investors or publishers don't casually ask you to erase your whole channel and remove your gateway access to steam is he trying to wipe the slate clean it was only about a few hours later that a 15 minute video dropped on the wingman games youtube channel and this video <sighs> This is the most manipulative video I have ever seen from a developer, where Matt basically plays the victim the entire time while trying to morph the conversation, as if it were the YouTuber's fault that he didn't finish the game, as if it was the YouTuber's fault that deleted his Steam page, as if it was the YouTuber's fault that he took your money and didn't deliver on his promises, all the while energizing what's left of his community to attack these YouTubers. This video is disgusting, and I am glad that he deleted it, but the manipulation didn't stop there. He turned off the like and dislike ratio, and he was deleting any dissenting comments, only leaving the ones that were praising him and feeling bad for him. All we wanted was gameplay, and he couldn't even show it off in this video. All he showed off was a bunch of bot assets throughout this entire video. Big Fry did a really good response to this, which I recommend that you go watch. Initially, I was going to do a comparison video between how many comments are actually on Matt's video versus Big Fry's, because they both basically have the same amount of views, but Big Fry had a lot more comments. And if you looked at Big Fry's like to dislike bar, you could see that the likes are obviously more for Big Fry than they would have been for Matt Norman if he actually had them on. But that video has been deleted and the only thing that I have of reference is comments in Big Fry's comment section where they say that their comment that was on Matt's video was deleted. Hey, remember at the beginning of the video when I said that you don't want to be one of those developers that shuts out criticism now, do you? <coughs> so after Big Fry did his response video, which again, I recommend that you go and watch because I can't put out Matt's original video because it's been deleted. or maybe be private i'm not entirely sure but anyways after that matt norman did a response in the description of that 15 minute video it was a very very long response that again mostly blamed big fry for a lot of his problems but then big fry replied on twitter basically refuting every point that matt tried to bring across i'd like to say that it stopped there but it kept on going over on facebook matt made a post saying thanks to all the support that you guys gave me on that video because i totally didn't delete the sentient comments and turn off the like to dislike ratio we have decided to start a production again only this time we're looking for someone to buy us out oh shit here we go again so i'm guessing he tried to scapegoat big fry into making people think that it was somehow his fault that he wasn't able to finish the game so magically his site is back up and donations are going to be accepted again probably i don't know the discord that he deleted he made a new one and he's even more authoritarian than he was in the last one because people that are joining up are all of a sudden getting banned without even saying anything good show just remember, Matt, you're the one that started this when you put that comment on my first video about SRT. This is all on you. We're going to be watching. And unless we see gameplay or people's money returned, 
we're not gonna let up. Fellow gamers, be sure to steer clear from this project because I have a feeling that nothing's ever going to come out. So I hope that that just about covers everything. I wanna say that I'm kinda sorry for uh, not posting in the past week. I was having a bit of issues with my internet connection. If you liked the video, be sure to like and subscribe and share the video. If you wanna support the channel, check out my NordVPN link down in the description or down in the comments, depending on where it is. If you don't wanna do that, you could always send two bucks my way on Patreon. It's completely up to you. But yeah, I wanna thank everybody for coming out to watch and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.